All right, while many of us think of diabetes affecting mainly overweight adults, diabetes also occurs in kids. And this morning, Dr. Jennifer Arnold is back along with Dr. Jose Canis from Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. This morning, we're to discuss some of the latest treatments for kids. Good morning. Good, Good morning. to see you again. Here. So it's also, we should mention, November Di uh, Diabetes Awareness Month, which is Absolutely. why we're talking about this this morning. But it is interesting to see how things have changed with treatments along the way. But let's start with you, doctor. Yes. Well, you know, what's exciting about uh, Diabetes Awareness Month is that we can really raise awareness uh, for all of us out there to help, uh, you know, improve treatments and prevention of diabetes. Um, so for children, for pediatrics, kids that are 18 years of age and younger, um, the majority of kids who have diabetes have type 1, which mm -hmm. has the genetic Just predisposition. Genetics, yeah. And, you know, require a host of treatments. Um, but we do see that that 25% of kids that are actually developing type 2 diabetes, which can, um, you know, be improved with managing weight and decreasing mm -hmm. childhood obesity. And we're unfortunately seeing that percentage rise. So we're seeing more mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes in kids, um, which is something that, you know, we want to raise awareness about so that we can decrease the risk to our kids. Yeah, so we're going to talk about treatments in just a moment, but let's talk for parents watching this morning. What are some of maybe the signs um, and symptoms that maybe start showing early on in kids that we should know? Yeah, so for a child who may have diabetes, a new diagnosis, things that parents need to be looking out for include increased thirst, um, really being thirsty a lot, a lot more than usual, uh, increased urination, um, so peeing a lot, in particular uh, nighttime bedwetting, okay. um, particularly if you had a child um, that was, uh, you know, already potty trained and didn't have accidents mm -hmm. at nights and all of a sudden that starts, that might be something to think about. Um, and then if it progresses, you'll see kids start to have, um, potentially present with something called ketoacidosis which means that now, because it hasn't been recognized, their blood sugar level is very high, and they have a lot of acid in their blood, and that can lead to signs such as abdominal pain, mm. headaches, nausea, vomiting, um, and ultimately, if it progresses, could lead to coma oh, and be wow. at risk of death. So. Um, it's ideal to talk to your pediatrician early on if you're starting to see warning signs so that it, your child can be evaluated sooner. So Dr. Canis, if we do get that diagnosis of, okay, your child now has diabetes, uh, I guess maybe give a little bit of the good news that I feel like it's somewhat um, easier to, to treat now. Well, um, the treatment is basically insulin for mm -hmm. most cases in childhood because of the um, rapid onset mm -hmm. of, of high glucose and we need to get that normal. Mm -hmm. So insulin is injectable and um, usually we have pumps that can deliver the insulin more uh, physiologically. So that's that's the good news. Is that still the main way that we're kind of treating it, those? Yes, insulin cannot be given in any other way but through the skin. Okay. Uh, there are some uh, um, nasal insulins that are being mm -hmm. looked at, but um, right now it's not, um, it's not available. Now you did bring an example though of something here that's... Um... That's the opposite of insulin. So, so when your blood sugar goes too low, you need to rescue the patient. Usually they, they pass out or they become unconscious. And to rescue, we used to um, teach parents that they had to mix a um, product called glucagon and inject it quickly mm -hmm. to revive the child. But now there is a nasal form of this uh, glucagon, which can be administered in a child that's passed out okay. over the age of four. So okay, and cool. you actually brought an example of this. Yeah, that we're we did. Show real quickly. Yes, we actually have the um, mm -hmm. the device. Yep, it's pretty and easy. Basically, you hold it like a like mm -hmm. a syringe, but um, the tip is what you insert into the nostril. Okay. Just like this, and then you click, and you deliver two clicks. Okay. And that should wake the child up, just like that. Wow. Well, and I love this goes back to the simulation because this is what your passion is and making Absolutely. sure that parents, not yes. only doctors, yep. have the, the proper training. Um, training that they need. Well, and that's what's so exciting about some of these new tools because really our parents are the first responders yes. if their child were to develop low blood sugar or go into ketoacidosis. And so we can now to bring our parents here and train them on how to do this in that life-threatening emergency yeah. situation. We're out of time, but if, pe if parents have more questions, uh, what would you have them do? Where can, where can people get more info? Well, definitely uh, take a look at hopkinsallchildrens.org um, and reach out to Dr. Canis' team. Yeah, um, and, and we can see your child if they have any concerns that diabetes might be something uh, you're worried about. All right. Thank you both for your time this Thank morning. You. We appreciate Thank it. You. And of course, we'll put all that info on our website as well.